Hi, welcome back to Helen Ponson's YouTube channel. I am attorney Melanie Williams. Today we're going to be talking about um, how to gather your evidence, what you need to do in order to prepare your claim for it to be decided. So basically what to do while your claim is being processed. So we know that we have talked before in other videos about filing that initial claim. Today, that's not what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be focusing on what you do after that initial claim is submitted. We know that, unfortunately, the VA is has quite the backlog and they take a long time to process their, their claims. And so while you may be tempted to just kind of sit back and wait, we actually advise that you go about gathering evidence that might be helpful in having them decide your claim favorably. So the first thing to know is, is kind of the claims process and what happens when you file that claim. So um, when you do file the initial claim, it goes to the regional office. That is the, the local level of the VA, what's kind of the, the lower level where things initially happen. When, when you get a denial and you appeal, it goes up to the higher levels, which I'll cover in a second. But essentially, it goes to an initial rater where they will look at the evidence and make an initial decision. They either deny or if they grant service connection, they have to issue a rating and issue an effective date. If you are not happy with any of those decisions, whether it's a denial or if it's the rating that they assigned or the effective date, you can then appeal. Under the AMA, the Appeals Modernization Act, you have uh, three different avenues that you can appeal. The first is what's called the supplemental claim lane, which is where you would submit additional evidence. In that case, it goes back to, again, that same level. An initial rater would be the one making the decision or making a new decision. You could also appeal by what's called higher level review, where in that case, you wouldn't submit anything additional. It would just go to someone else at the VA for them to issue a decision. It's essentially someone higher up than the initial rater, someone with, let's say, a little more experience, basically reviewing what that initial person decided to see if it's correct or if they made a mistake. Your third option would be to appeal to the BVA, the Board of Veterans Appeals. That's the higher level up where a veterans law judge will look at your case and issue a decision. And then from there, once they issue a decision, if it is a denial, you have the choice to either submit new evidence and start again at the supplemental claim lane at the lower level with an initial rater, or you have the option to appeal up to the Court of Appeals for Veterans Claims or the CAVC. That's an even higher level of appeal. But so that's all kind of um, on, the, on the back end of the appeals process. So let's go back to the beginning um, and discuss what happens when you file that appeal and it's before that initial rater. They are looking at your claim deciding whether or not you're entitled to service connection or a higher rating. So what you're going to be doing in the meantime is gathering your evidence. So the first thing you want to do is request a copy of your claims file. We call that your C file. It's the file that the VA keeps on you that has all of your records, everything you've ever filed since your discharge, your DD-214, your service records, your service medical records, your VA records, all of your claims. Um, that's going to be the most important thing to figuring out what evidence the VA has and what they don't have. In order to request the claims file, you're going to want to request a copy from your local VA regional office. The form that you want to fill out is called the VA Form 3288. This is the request for and consent to release of information from individual records. Now, keep in mind, requesting a copy of your claims file, unfortunately, takes a very long time. We have seen it take anywhere from six months to a year. Sometimes it goes faster than that, but unfortunately there, there is a backlog. So another thing that you can do while waiting for your claim to be decided, while waiting for your claims file, is medical records. Medical records are really important for your case because that's what the VA is going to be using to determine what your current condition is, what your current severity is. So if you are getting treatment at the VA, the VA has access to those records directly. If you're getting treatment at a private facility outside of the VA, 
you're going to want to request those records from your provider and submit them to the VA. You want to go through and, and make sure that it covers all of your, your conditions that you're either seeking service connection for or an increased rating for. Also, when you go to the doctor, make sure that you're talking to them about your conditions. Make sure that you are making them aware of the complaints that you have, whether it's pain, whether it's an inability to move around, or if you're having intrusive thoughts or nightmares or flashbacks. A lot lot of times these are things that veterans just kind of push through and don't think it's necessary to discuss with their doctor, but it is because the doctor will then make notes of that. And those notes that are in the records are what's going to help the VA see the condition that you have and what the severity is. So if you're not talking to your doctor about it, it's not going to be in your records and the VA likely isn't going to know about it. Aside from medical records, another really important thing that you're going to want is statements or what we call buddy statements. Buddy statements are um, statements from people that know you the best, people in your life, like a significant other, your parents, people that you live with. A lot of times they are the best witness to what you go through on a daily basis. And they may be able to provide insight that you yourself aren't aware of. A lot of times they can talk about your, your irritability or which is a symptom of PTSD or your inability to communicate with people or interact with people. They they may be able to see that a, let, a little better than you can. So asking those people in your life to document and write out what they witness and, and what they see, um, give examples, be as detailed as possible to really paint the picture for the VA as to the severity of your condition. That makes a big difference in, in, in showing what your symptoms are, how, how severe your condition is, and would then ultimately help the VA when establishing a rating. You also will want to submit a, a statement so that you are giving your own account because usually at, at this initial stage where the initial rater is making a decision, they're not going to have the chance to talk to you directly. So this statement is what's going to help you show and tell your story and really explain what it is that you go through so that they can see what you're dealing with and ultimately use that to make a decision. Now, once you have all of your evidence, you want to submit it to the VA. So you can either take it to your local VA office. What we would suggest is mailing it. So I'm going to give you the address that you can mail your evidence to. It's going to be addressed to the Department of Veterans Affairs Claims Intake Center. The address is P.O. Box 4444, Janesville, Wisconsin, 53547, 4444. So that's the address where VA accepts all documents. We will also include it below in the comments so that you can use it for reference. You can also call them. Their phone number is 800-827-1000. They accept calls Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. You can also find this information on the VA's website. I'm just giving it to you now so that you know what you can do as, as you're gathering this evidence. But so once you submit it, again, unfortunately, the VA does take a long time to issue a decision. While you're waiting, the best thing that you can do to check in on the status or make sure things are moving is to check your e benefits account if you have one. You can also call the VA, but short of that, unfortunately, there isn't really anything that anyone can do to make the VA move any faster. If you're working with us, if we are your attorney, we have the ability to check in on the online system to make sure that they received it, to see what the status is. That's something that's available to attorneys and claims agents that represent veterans, but unfortunately, that's not available to veterans who are representing themselves. Besides that, unfortunately, there isn't really anything else that you can do to to get the VA to move on your claim any faster. But at least you know that once you've filed your claim, you've done everything you can to make sure that the favorable evidence is in there for them to make a positive decision on your case. So that's all that I have for you right now. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and let us know if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you.